where it says bill next here for the status, that you can't change. Basically, when you're posting insurance, you can bill the next responsible party, which would be the secondary insurance, or just bypass and tra use a transfer and transfer the, the remainder of portion directly to the patient. And we'll cover that when we're posting insurance payments. But for in this example, it's just going to say that the patient's the last person we're billing. It's assumed that we already billed the insurance. And so for this remainder amount, after we post a $51.25 and write off $10, then the difference of that, of the $300 that they owe right now, will be billed again back to the patient. It'll just go ahead and subtract that, and it'll just say keep billing the patient here. And that's what the bill next means. Now, before I go ahead and click OK to post these payments, I want to show you the before and what it will be after I post the payment when we look at the patient history screen. Now, there's a patient HX button here, and that means HX for history. And then we also have a family history. Now, the patient's just for the patient. You can see up at the top, John Adams. The family history is the responsible party portion of it. In other words, if John Adams is the responsible party, not only for himself, but for his sons and daughters, um, Jane and Susie and so forth, and they come and see the doctor and they have charges posted, you can actually click here on the family history. And over to the left-hand side, it would be listed John if he's his own responsible party, and also Susie, and you can see his name there. But John doesn't have anybody else he's responsible for paying for if he did. There'd be Adam Susie, Adams, comma, um, Jane, and they'd be listed down below with their history, but group by name. So we can close out of here, and then we can just look at the patient history by clicking on the button here. Now, I could go to the history tab here, but I'd have to click cancel, and I'd lose all my work, and I don't want to do that. Or I could click OK, but then you wouldn't see what the history looked like before I actually posted the money. So I'm going to click here. And you can see in this screen, at least right off the bat, you can see down below we've got two line items in green. And of course, that's our unapplied amount. When we do what we did before, when we take the $200 here, and we don't apply it down here to the charges, but we just take 200 and click OK here, then it comes down here, like we said, and it sits there, and the patient still gets statements, and they make angry phone calls because we haven't applied the portion here to the right dates of services, so the statement goes out zero, or it goes out with a loss, lot less money than the, they actually owed because they paid it up front. We just didn't apply it right. Now, the before and after I wanted to talk to you about is, first of all here, look at the 99202, okay? January 30th, and the visit number is 79562. Now, the patient balance, they owe us $73. And I call it the balance because if you look up in the column header here, everything in this column is what the patient owes. Now, it could be zero dollars, and it'll still pull in the screen. The reason why is because if there's an open balance in the insurance, either an open balance for the insurance or the patient, for this charge here, it'll always show here under the open items because there's an open balance. So, for example, if I go to all items and I click reload, you can see it pulls in voids that I've done in the past, and it also shows here anything that doesn't have a balance for both the insurance and the patient here. So that way, if I go to open and I click reload, it just shows me who owes me, either from the patient or the insurance. That way it's a cleaner screen here. I don't have to look at the history because more than likely I don't need to worry about things that have already been paid up on. So keep that in mind. There's a $73. When I post the payment, it's going to add a little plus sign over to the right and put a green PP underneath it of $73 and it's still going to be here. It's not going to remove it from my open items because insurance still owes us money, $200. So I'm going to close out of here. Keep that in mind. There's the 73 plus our other um, two charges that we're posting as well and click OK. After I click OK, it'll update the family portion up here, um, what they have left that's owed, and also any unapplied. So what's funny about this is, or not, is that they owe $248 but they have an unapplied amount or a credit you could call of 273 so the patient will get a statement for $248 which is going to anger them because we didn't take the 203 to apply it here to wipe it out in fact it looks like we owe them a refund on top of that but let's go to the history tab down at the bottom and take a look at our work and you recall the January 30th if I expand that plus sign there's my $73 and if you recall I tied a note to this so if I double click on the payment here there it is there's a helpful note that's spiffy. And so I also know that who posted the payment was me, and then also the amount of $200, which was the total amount of the check, but it was proportioned over these charges down below, $73 for this charge, for that date of service, for that visit number, and then the other two that we 
posted it to as well. So it's got a great history here, really nice. I'm going to close out of here. And then, of course, you can look at other payments that have been posted as well. Now, if I make a mistake here and I go, whoops, I didn't mean or somebody posted to $5.25 and it wasn't supposed to go to this charge here for that data service, whatever you do, you don't want to avoid it. The only time you want to avoid payments here is if you're not shifting money around. It actually was a mispost here and you need to repost it to another account or mistakenly you posted it and it's not supposed to be posted to another account. So we'll start with the first one here. Let's say that this one right here is posted to the wrong data service. Select it and then just click on apply. Click OK. Updates and now it dumps it down here. So we have $5.25 sitting down here that says OK. So you didn't want it to that data service. Now what data service do you want it to apply to? So I've got all these unapplied. So let's go back and show you how to post unapplied payments for patients. So what we're doing here is we're taking these unapplied payments and we're saying, look, we don't want these as credits. We want to be able to take these unapplied with the letter U's and actually apply them to the right data service or charges up above. So the patient, when they get a statement, it doesn't show that they owe us anything more because, of course, they're going to be angry if they already pay this, but we're just not applying it to the right charge because the statements will still show that they owe more if we don't apply it to the right charge. So going back to the Transaction Entry tab, clicking on Payment, Automatically, you can see when I look over to the right that the patient balance is a negative 24. In other words, we owe them $24.25 because they have so many unapplied patient payments that are sitting out there. So if I select unapplied, automatically pulls to the right all the unapplied payments. And you'll want to use your scrolly up here to make sure you see all of them to scroll up and down. So what we'll do is we'll say let's apply the first $5.25 by checking the box. Automatically fills in the information for me and from the previous check that was tied to this number here but we're shifting it to a different data service or a different charge and of course it fills in everything for me and if I'm okay with everything you can see the amount remaining is five dollars and twenty five cents so I just need to make sure I take that and put it down below so let's look at the last one here the most recent uh, patient balance of ten dollars and let's type it in here five point two five and hit the tab key so I have a zero amount remaining Let's go to the next one. Let's check the $73. You'll notice that when I check that, the payment amount now is combining both these as $78.25. And there it is, the amount remaining. But it automatically cleared out what I've already done. So be sure to check all of the ones you want to apply to first, and then go ahead and disperse them down below. So I can do oldest to newest. And then if I'm okay with that, now remember I've got one more unapplied, but maybe that un unapplied's a mistake. Maybe that was never really supposed to be posted, so I can leave that unchecked. When I'm done, I can go back to my patient history tab and void that. So at least there won't be a patient balance in the negative, because let's pretend that was incorrect. Really, basically, it's that simple when posting unapplied. It's just checking what you want and then dispersing it down below. There's one more thing I'd like to keep in mind, though is that we do have these other buttons, debit adjustment and take backs. And take backs, you want to watch the training video on take backs. Debit adjustments, you can watch the quick pay entry video to get a little bit more information about the debit adjustment. But the thing that you want to do if you decide to post a charge here or a debit adjustment, that you do that first. Because if I click it right now and I post a charge, it will erase all this. So if everything looks good, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Updates the information up above. I'm going to go back to the History tab. It removes the green line items because it shifted them to the correct charge that I applied them to. There's the $73. The last thing I want to do here is I can do one of two things. I can either refund this or void it. So what I'm really saying here is that, sure, I can go ahead and post the remainder amount of the $200 and then do a refund. Or I could pretend that this was just a total mistake and void it. So if I do void it, it wipes it off. But then if I select all items and reload, it'll show me all the voids that I've done but I don't want to see the past, I just want to see what's opened and click reload. And you can see the patient balances get wiped out here, that's great, it's just the insurance has a lot that we need to collect from. Now for the refunds, you want to watch a training video on refunds to learn a little bit more about that. Now let's go to the next one, click on transaction entry and go to payment. So we learned about the first two as far as the patient payments go, by patient, anything that was unapplied, in other words we posted a payment but it didn't apply to any charge and so we had to take that unapplied and actually assign it to a charge. Next we'll go to the repost patient payment. So again what this means is that you want to repost a payment that was posted to the wrong account 
and also to prevent the repos from showing up on current deposit slips so it doesn't appear like you got paid twice. This is basically shifting the money around here. To do a reposting of the payment, the actual step you need to do is to first I'm going to click cancel. The first step is to pull up the patient who a payment was wrongly posted to. So, you know, I can come up here and we'll say it's Adams again and hit the tab key and of course it pulls up John Adams because he's the only one in the system. So what we're doing here is we're pulling up the patient who a payment was wrongly posted to. So let's say we wrongly posted the payment to John Adams and we'll just go ahead and choose one of these and let's say we posted 975 incorrectly. So what we want to do is we want to double click on this payment, write down the check and the batch number and the deposit date. So the check number is 54154 see it right here and I'm writing it down too. Also a batch number and the batch is zero which means actually this payment was posted without using a batch. If there was a batch it would have a number there. Something you want to keep in mind. And then also the deposit date which was April 19th 2007 so we make sure that we write that down as well. After we get that information then we want to come in here to the note field, delete it, and then type in something about we're avoiding this payment and then the name of the patient's account we're posting it to. And then, of course, it's always good to add a smiley face after you type in your note. Once you type in your note, you wrote down the information, go ahead and click Save. Close out. Then, with the payment still selected here, you want to come down here and click on the Void button. So now that we've voided the payment of $9.75, the next thing you want to do is pull up the patient who it's supposed to be posted to. So up here in the right-hand corner, I'm going to type in Simpson. Hit the Tab key. Double-click on Homer. You can see he's got some things i got to work on too. He has an unapplied payment of $300. But the next thing we'll do is we'll go to the transaction entry, payment. We'll choose repost a patient payment. And then just fill in the correct information that we wrote down here. Now, before you post the payment, the reason why I had you get the batch number, because if you want to post this by batch or have it tied to your batches, then what you need to do is before you do this is come up here and click on your batch button. And if you don't have a batch open, but you would like one, or you do have one, and it's batch 35, and you want to post it to the correct batch, well, close your batch so it's blank like this, and then click Reopen. And then the posting date's today, but I can go back oh, a couple of weeks and double-click, and then click Refresh. And then here's one, and maybe if that's the posting date that I want this money to be tied to in my batch, so it's supposed to be posted on that date, I can go ahead and double-click on it and select it. And so I'm not using batches to post 